Okay, last week I made a video on how to use the compass in GeoGuessr and uh, the different ways it can help you. Uh, not just in terms of like guessing the hemisphere or exactly pinpointing, but in also in terms of like using it to region guess or landscape guess or uh, those kind of things, you know. It's, it's a very useful tool and uh, that's what the video is about. And a lot of you gave me really like positive feedback and uh, that, that was awesome and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really happy and a lot of people suggested to me that I should do like more like sort of tips videos or things like that where uh, yeah, stuff that could help uh, players who are getting into the game or uh, want to improve at the game. So that's what I'm going to do today in a way is I'm going to talk about how you can get good at GeoGuessr pretty much. Uh, so we'll pretend that you're starting to play today and uh, you want to reach like the level of the players who have like world records, speedrun records, um, yeah, I don't know, just overall really, really, really good players. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of them in the Rainbow tournaments that have been happening weekly these days. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the different steps or stages that uh, that most, if not all of us, have gone through to get to this level. And uh, we'll talk about it. So the thing is, uh, ideally, what I thought would be a nice way to do this video was to like write down a script, prepare all the damn information, prepare a bunch of locations on maps and uh, you can see them. Uh, like I can use them to demonstrate uh, the points I'm making. And I edit down the video, cut down all the... But that's, that's just not my style, you know, like... Uh, Ideally, it would be nice if it was like a compact and uh, very to the point video, but um, it, that, that, it's just how I am, really. I I just prefer to like hit record and just ramble on for like 30 minutes and uh, then that's uh, that's the video. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to like have a conversation with you guys. I'll just chat with you guys about how you can do this. Do this. I have MapMaker open here, which, uh, <clears throat> which contains uh, basically all the Street View coverage. And uh, I'll go to certain sp sp places and uh, try to use some examples to show you what I'm talking about at different points. So, uh, that all being said, let's get into this. And uh, before we get into it, I kind of want to like talk about for a little bit uh, uh, the sort of like when I go online and see like different people talking about GeoGuessr in different places, uh, I see a lot of mixed opinions and comments on. Uh, what people think of all these good players and how like how they actually are so good at the game and all that firstly uh first well firstly some people think that uh, <laughs> players is just straight up cheating and uh i will uh well there is definitely a certain of section of players uh especially on like the in-game competitive stuff you often encounter players who are cheating but uh, that's that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about actually really good players players that you've probably been seeing in the rainbow tournaments uh, who have over the months over the past year or two shown consistently how much they actually know and it's actually mind-blowing dude like when you when you see the whole video you'll actually be amazed at how much people actually know about this world and it's 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 so amazing like if you really want to Go on this journey i like it it's such a nice experience learning so much about the world so i recommend you to have that open sort of mindset don't uh, don't just assume that everyone who's good is cheating and uh, people have spent thousands of, i don't know if, yeah pr probably some people have spent thousands of hours playing this game if not then definitely in the hundreds at least so so with all that being said uh i'd like to also say that there's uh, i also see people saying that oh they're just good because they learned all the camera generations and car metas and all that meta stuff uh and the thing is it's it's like people assume that that's like a black box that oh you you just memorize all the camera gens and car metas and then you're going to get insane guesses all the but that's just absolutely not true and uh in today's video i'll show you why uh and honestly beyond a certain level of skill that's like almost irrelevant as well like you really don't need car meta and uh, uh and camera gens beyond a certain point 
where you sometimes need them in like country streaks or stuff where it's like you've got a really hard round and there's very very limited info then you have to use whatever you whatever's at your disposal and uh, make the most of it but uh outside of that really like most players don't really need the camera gens that much and uh, car metas and all of that so uh i'd like you to keep that in mind just like have an open mindset for this video uh don't come in with the pre i don't know like yeah just don't come in with the assumption that you already know why people are this good or stuff like that because there are different ways to the different like so many things to learn and uh uh yeah i'm just I, like this video i'm i, I just want to like show you guys how insane and how much there is to actually learn in the game how much there is to learn about the world and uh yeah basically the kind of things that people spend time learning to get better so i've been rambling for a bit but uh, i wanted to talk about all this because uh I didn't want people to have just that conception that, oh, these guys just study damn poles and bollards and cameragens and car meras and that's it. And then they just use that to make uh, to make their guesses. So it's like it's like a magical black box where you just like learn all of this and then you know the whole world. But that's just completely not true. <clears throat> so uh, that being said, I want to make, make it clear that some of the best players are pretty much every player who's at that level is also probably the best at knowing landscape and vegetation and uh, those kind of things that uh, a lot of like purists uh, consider to be the way to play the game and uh, yeah I'd say it's just people like it, 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 it it's, it's quite simple really I understand like a lot of people just want to play the game to explore the world and uh, that's that's totally fair you know uh, you, you, you're not as worried about the guessing aspect, you're more interested in the exploration aspect. Oh, look at how people live here, look at these landscapes, look at these different languages, the architecture, the vegetation, look at these different kind of trees that you see. And the thing is, like all the good players, we would have to be insane to no also not love all of this and spend so much time on the game. So, like pretty much every single person who is at this like high level of gameplay also enjoys all of this and they've probably spent hours looking at different architecture looking at different languages and as i said like in terms of landscape and vegetation they probably know more than most people would like have any idea of uh, of how much they know and uh, yeah so like the reason why a lot of us even spend so much time learning all of this is because we want to know the world we want to learn the world and uh, you know, there's there's so many things to learn. It's the culture, the landscape, the architecture, the vegetation is one thing, but then also the infrastructure of the country, like roads, how well maintained the roads are, the different road lines they have, the electric poles, and all of that. Uh, like I understand if it's it's probably boring for some people to learn those things, but uh, uh, the thing is, exploration can only get you that that far, you know can only learn a certain section of things by just like exploring the landscapes and architecture and all of that but uh, when you go into competitive stuff and world records and speed runs there are a certain set of clues that you really need because like basically when you spawn in you have to make use of every pixel that you can see to make the best uh, best guess uh, that you can you know uh, because yeah you have limited information and uh, you have to make the most of that information so if you choose to just ignore a certain thing like let's say the electric poles uh, then in a competitive environment that automatically puts you at a dis disadvantage you know so if you want to get into that kind of competitive stuff i i'm i would like try to give a forewarning that the uh, if you're a p exploration purist kind of person who, who really doesn't like uh, care about all of this then uh, yeah, competitive is really just not for you because uh, if if you want to stick to only learning a few hints, then you will, yeah, you you will always be at a disadvantage because uh, your opponents will know everything that you know plus other things like electric poles and stuff. So that's what I wanted to say basically. This the best of the best players uh, haven't like 
it's not like a magic box where you just learn the electric poles, bollards, karma, and uh, you become the best and you know everything in the world. It's more so learning all of those things on top of the things that people already learn, which is landscape, vegetation, languages, architecture, all of that. So that being said, uh, from this point on, I'm actually going to get into the process of uh, getting good. And uh, uh, yeah, like if you actually want to actively try to improve the game and get to like a very high level of gameplay, I think uh, this would be very interesting to you. And if you are someone who just likes to play the game to explore, uh, I'd say maybe maybe uh, it would be nice if you watch along as well to learn like how people actually get to that kind of level and what they actually know as compared to what you think they know. And uh, yeah, but uh, but if you're actually playing the game actively and want to want like a general like road or like a I don't know like a guideline for how how you could uh, improve at the game i can uh, i hope i think this video will give you certain tips so that's 11 minutes of rambling and um, <laughs> i still haven't gotten into the main substance of the video but uh, i just wanted to address a few things beforehand so I, I got that out of the way now let's get into the video and uh, let's uh, let's go step by step so i've written down some steps on on notepad and uh, I think I can uh, go through them one by one to sort of explain how you can gradually improve. So let's pretend that you started playing the game today. So first thing you need to look at is a uh, general clues about the world, right? So you sort of need to develop a general vibe of uh, how different parts of the world look. So like mainly like differentiating the different continents, what South America looks like, what North America looks like, what Africa looks like, Europe, Asia, Australia. I think a lot of people have the general idea for it, but if not, then um, just playing the game a bit, uh, I think you can sort of develop the idea of uh, how the different continents look. Uh, you can use like the compass, for example, if you are in Argentina. Oh, I forgot to uh, need to zoom in a bit. So yeah, if you're in the in Argentina, you can see the sun is in the north. Uh, and that usually indicates that you're in the southern hemisphere. So, yeah, like looking at the position of the sun kind of helps you get an idea of what hemisphere you're in. So that can help you narrow it down a bit. Uh, it's also helpful to just know, like, like South America, for example, speaks mainly Spanish and Portuguese in Brazil. Uh, Europe has a bunch of different languages. Asia has like their own set of languages with different scripts. Uh, and yeah, just learning all of these things uh, about different continents uh, is, is a good start. Um, so yeah, got general clues about the world, like the position of the sun. Uh, you've got continent specific clues, uh, which I can get into a bit more as well. Because, uh, for example, if you're in North America or South America, usually what you have is a yellow line in the middle of the road and white line on the side of the road. So, usually if you have yellow center road lines, that is like a general indication of being in North or South America. But I mean, it's still possible to have like white center road lines. There are always like exceptions. So in Chile, for example, you will uh, quite often have like a white middle line in the on the road. So even if you're in South America, you can get that. Also sometimes in Argentina. But yeah, as a general like rule of thumb, I guess, uh, central road lines in North and South America are usually yellow. And uh, that, uh, that kind of stuff uh, also helps to know like what side a lot of places drive on. So like uh, Australia and New Zealand both drive on the left. Uh, that's not a good uh, location to demonstrate that but uh, let's go in like downtown Auckland and uh, so yeah here you can see all the cars are parked on the left uh, the signs are to the left of the road as well so that indicates that you're driving on the left and uh, yeah it, it helps to know what parts of the world drive in which side so North America all drives on the right pretty much South America as well uh, well also helps to know what countries have coverage because uh, 
ultimately you're playing a game of identifying Google Street View and certain countries just don't have Google, Google Street View so uh, <laughs> so yeah there's really no point making a guess in Libya ever because uh, it's never going to be there uh, because there's no Google cover I mean unless you're playing like a photosphere map but uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really talking about Photosphere, I'm talking about official Google coverage because uh, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's what, uh, that's what uh, most people play. That's uh, good quality standard coverage and that's, uh, yeah, all, like most most default maps and uh, maps in GeoGuessr use uh, official coverage. So learning where you get official coverage is a, is a big hint, a big, uh, big bonus. Um, you can find it on websites like this. So if you go to GeoHints, you can see this country's graph and it shows you where in the world you have coverage. So all the places in red have uh, coverage. Places with uh, pink or purple, whatever this is, have a decent amount of coverage, but uh, r but really not that much. It's And then blue places have like very, very little coverage. So you can go here, geohints.com slash countries, and uh, learn that and uh, yeah that's about it about uh, continent specific clues you can also learn flags and domains I think uh, a lot of people use those already when they're playing when they're starting out and uh, you know you're somewhere in Europe you don't know where you are you go and try to find a domain or a flag and then you suddenly see a domain dot HR and you don't know what uh, what domain that is but it's actually Croatia and not Hungary. Hungary is HU. So, learning all that stuff, domains and uh, flags, might uh, might come in handy because uh, you know it's like basic stuff. So, I'd say those are like the first step of uh, getting into the game, which uh, I think a lot of people already do and already know a lot of these things. So, general clues, continent-specific clues, flags and domains, coverage and uh, the driving side, I guess. I haven't written that down here, but uh, I guess I could do it right now. Driving side also helps a lot. So, learning all this uh, is a good start to give you a general idea of where you can be in the world. And then you move on to step two. Now, step two is the country specific clues. So, a lot of people <laughs> hate this, and a lot of people. Okay, so. I'd say a lot of people are hard stuck at this stage. So some people get intimidated by this and just never proceed further. Some people learn some of it and then they're like, oh, this is too much to learn. This is just boring. This is not uh, not my thing. And then they, they just leave it midway. And some people learn all of this and they think they're suddenly the best and uh, stop there but uh, realistically this is just step two and there are like five steps in the, in the procedure I've written so people who stop here have a good idea of what country they are in usually you'll find a lot of these players in comparative GeoGuessr and like I don't know like gold master division a lot of people make it up to there with just knowing this so knowing this is definitely a necessity to get better but uh, it is not even close to what people actually know about the world which will be in the further steps so uh, let's talk about this first um so a few things that uh, that uh, i think are really really important firstly languages uh, i haven't really written this in like any specific order so it's not like this is most important this is second most it's, it's nothing like that just a bunch of things that uh, you could learn to get good so languages a lot of European languages have uh, different characters, different scripts, and uh, being able to generally differentiate them is usually good enough. Like Poland, you'll see a lot of W's. Hungary, you'll see like a lot of Z, S, like S, Z combinations. Um, and that kind of stuff, you know, you just uh, learn to differentiate in general the languages. Like Bulgaria uses the Cyrillic script, Russia, Ukraine as well. Um, difference in languages between Norway, Sweden and Finland. All that uh, comes in kind of handy. Like you don't have to learn the language. You just need to know what it looks like more or less. Um, and that's uh, that's pretty doable. So that then you can also learn the difference between like Thai script, Cambo script um, and how you can like 
differentiate them uh korean and japanese or even like chinese uh and yeah like a lot of different places in the world have so many different languages and uh well knowing which country speaks which language and the difference between their scripts i think is usually usually good enough to know so like for for example tunisia uses both arabic and french and uh Senegal also has a bunch of French so like yeah learning this uh, which countries will have which kind of language uh, really helps out quite a bit so that's one thing you also can learn uh, bollards poles and road lines and uh, I think those are some really really good and useful tips that uh, a lot of people choose not to learn because it's like learning infrastructure and all of that uh, and I can understand but the thing is it's also about how you learn it right if you just literally open google geo hints and open this page of bollards you're never going to learn it this is so boring like looking at this i mean it's a useful database 100 percent. that's uh that's not what i meant but uh if you're trying to learn all of this yeah like if you just keep looking at this for ages and you think you're going to learn bollards then that's just really not how it works the best way to learn things, and I've said this multiple times, um, and that's why I also do my series uh, of playalongs called Play Along with Tips, is because I think the best way to learn all these like country-specific clues is to play with people who know them, and uh, knowing the country-specific clues uh, is uh, is just one step. It's it's there's still so much more to learn. Uh, but it's also like probably the most extensive, well, not really the most, but it's like a very extensive step and uh, uh, it can get quite boring if you're literally just looking at a document or like a website and just trying to memorize everything. So I suggest instead of that, go to YouTube, go to Twitch and play along with people. Uh, a lot of times in YouTube videos, uh, people will explain how they're making the guess. At least that's what I do in my play alongs. Uh, and if you're playing on Twitch with people, then you 100% will definitely get like explanations from people, either from the streamer or from the Twitch chat on how they made the guess, what were the country-specific clues. So, you know, if you're in, uh, let's say, Poland and there was a bollard right there, then uh, people will tell you that, oh, this is the Polish bollard. And then you don't have to go through this whole database to try and remember what a Polish bollard looks like. You just, uh, you just remember it by playing the game and... Uh, that's how I learned all of this and uh, I think it's also the best way to learn it that way because it's uh, it's like a natural way to learn you know just by playing the game so if you play the game enough whether you like it or not you're going to pick it pick up these clues anyway but uh, if you just want to play the game for like 10 hours and know everything then that's that's not how it works <sighs> so yeah learning country specific clues takes a lot of time but uh, <clears throat> The more you play and the more you play with people who know this stuff, the better you can get at it. So that's the thing about bollards, electric poles and road lines. And uh, they can really, really help you recognize the country so, so well. And uh, it's so useful when you actually learn those things. But uh, it's, it, it is a lot to learn. That's true. But uh, bollards are especially useful in differentiating Europe. I know a lot of like players who are starting out struggle with Eastern Europe and uh, I'd say the best way to get good at Eastern Europe uh, well not the best but like one of the best ways to get get good at it is learning bollards it's uh, really helpful that can also help like in places like Ecuador Peru all that stuff so yeah you do get bollards outside even Australia New Zealand so yeah, you get you do get bollards outside of Europe and uh, uh, they, they definitely do help a lot so same goes for electric poles um, like Czechia Slovakia has its own kind of pole France has like a pole with like a blue sticker on it usually um, see this is the part where I was actually gonna have locations prepared and uh, just show you a location with a blue sticker on the pole but oh my god the first place I click and I see it so this blue sticker on the pole is French and uh, yeah those kind of hints you can learn uh, poles pole tops like uh uk and ireland have these like pole tops ah this is not the correct pole 
let's hope we find it this time. Yeah, like these these things sticking out of it. Uh, these kind of poles are usually found in UK and Ireland, so you know it can it can be really helpful. So for example, if you're in like a rural location in UK, then th there's really no easy way to know if you're in UK, Ireland, or like France or even Belgium maybe. Because they really look so similar. They all have similar looking roads. They have similar soil. They have similar vegetation because, yeah, you know, latitude and longitude wise, they're not too far from each other. And, uh, yeah, they all have like these kind of hedges, hedgerows, all of that. So when it comes to like these kind of locations, it this like you can't really be a, like a <laughs> like a landscape purist or whatever, because there's, there's really not much that you can do. Uh, you have to use whatever information you have. And in that case, uh, things like uh, electric poles come in really handy. <clears throat> so electric poles, there's a lot to learn. A um, lot of places have unique poles. And uh, Romania has, has a very unique pole. Hungary has a very unique pole. Poland has a very unique pole. So all of this is uh, very good to learn. Greece often has like wooden poles. In South America, the poles come in very handy. Brazil has a very unique pole. Argentina has one as well, and uh, Colombia, and yeah, basically the two main parts where I think people struggle the most are South America and Eastern Europe, and in both of those cases, learning electric poles goes a long way, and uh, same with bollards, and same with road lines, because, uh, for example, if you get a double white middle line and you think you're in the Balkans, then it's most likely going to be Greece. Um, so that's a, that's a, uh, this isn't a double white line middle, but uh, I think you get my point. There's a, there's a, there's so many different uh, like road lines in different countries and uh, it, it really comes in handy to know like the unique ones at least, you know? So that's a, uh, that's about that. Then you also have number plates. Uh, so like some countries have yellow number plates. So you have like Colombia with yellow plates. Netherlands with yellow plates, Luxembourg, all of that. Uh, if you see a green plate, you're probably in Norway, well, in Europe, I mean. Um, and then, yeah, in the US and Canada, number plates help a lot, uh, especially to differentiate between different states. So I'll get to that part later, but uh, number plates are very useful for that. So... <sighs> I think that's uh, that's about it. A uh, lot of a lot of things to learn. I've just made a list of uh, different things that you can learn to help, like identify the countries. So in step one, we went over like the whole world and general like continent clues and all of that. And step two is learning about country-specific clues. So pretty much, if you've learned all of this, you are pretty good at recognizing the countries. And uh, that's uh, that's what this step is all about. Is uh, to learn how to recognize countries. So you have uh, Google cars and camera generations. I know some people don't like to use it because uh, it's like meta data. It's like not things that you would actually see in real life there. And that's totally fair. I can understand if you want to play that way. But yeah, as I said, in a competitive environment, uh, you want to make use of every everything that is available at your disposal because you have very limited information and you want to make the best guess with it. So that's one thing. And the thing is, if you spend like hundreds or thousands of hours playing the game, whether you like it or not, these things are like automatically going to register in your head. Like you, you maybe don't want to learn what the Kyrgyzstan Google car looks like, but if you've seen it 500 times, then you know, you just know that you get this Google car in Kyrgyzstan. Like <laughs> if you've seen Kyrgyzstan locations on Street View, like so many times then it's, it's hard for your brain to just not notice that or not keep track of that so uh yeah those things um also uh kind of you just start picking up uh and camera generations especially i think are very very useful so they can help so much so like uh gen 1 camera is very rare but if you see it it's like super blurry can usually get it in Australia and uh, US and sometimes some other countries as well. Uh, but yeah, you can find all of that camera generation in here in GeoHints and uh, 
you have nice maps showing which countries have which camera generations. Gen 3 is usually like the most widely used camera. It's found all over the world. And then Gen 4 is the latest camera, which is uh, being used uh, to cover street view, even like as of today, you know, Google cars are still driving around the world and uh, they're using this Gen 4 camera, which is like a really high quality, nice camera. So, um, Gen 3 doesn't really help much, but learning where you get Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 4 helps a lot. So, those are things worth learning um, in terms of camera generations, and uh, they, they definitely come in handy quite a bit. So, uh, I'd say definitely way more handy than Google Cars. Like, Google Cars, you could probably skip learning about them, but uh, camera generations are very useful. And they're also a thing that you just pick up over time because you just notice the <laughs> difference in camera quality. So that's uh, that's that. Then you have uh, country specific signs and signposts. And I think this is uh, also very useful. So for example, if you go to Denmark, uh, let's hope I can find one in my first try. Uh, let's see. This is, see, this is why I wanted to prepare like a set of locations for this. Uh, well, I can't find that sign here. Maybe I should go like out here somewhere. Let's hope. No, not here. Come on, come on. Don't uh, don't keep. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So, in Denmark, you have this kind of a signpost, which is interesting. It goes like straight up and then does like a curve around the sign so this is a very unique signpost it's only found in denmark <clears throat> well there might be like certain ex exceptions where you find it in some other places but uh 99 of the time it'll be denmark and uh that's uh those kind of things really help out so if you're in brazil for example you will usually have please tell me there's a sign <laughs> oh no okay but uh, in Brazil, usually what you have is, aha, here it is. So if you have a sign, then on the back side of it, you have black colors. So you, you get like black back of signs in Brazil. Uh, in Colombia, you get like a cross on the back of signs. So yeah, just learning like different signposts and uh, signs uh, around the world really helps a lot. In Spain, for example, and like there's there's a lot to learn when when you go to this like go into this. Uh, for example, in Spain, can I find? Also helps to learn the different like kilometer markers and how they look. So this, for example, is a Spanish kilometer marker. So I guess it's also technically a type of signage. And uh, if you see this kind of a sign, you know you're in Spain already because only Spain uses these kind of uh, kilometer markers. So. Learning those signs also helps a lot. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of signs you can learn. You learn kilometer markers. You learn how different signposts look. You learn how different like back of signs look. You learn uh, the borders on signs. That's what I wanted to show here as well. Is in Spain, for example, you have a like a thick red outline on the sign. And I'm trying to find ah here's a, here's one. So yeah here, yeah here you can see this has like a very thick red outline on the sign. And uh, in, in a lot of other countries, you'd get like a slightly thin white border around this red. But in Spain, you don't get that. The red goes all the way to the end of the sign and it's, uh, it's very thick. So if you see that, you know it's a Spanish sign. And uh, things like that, you know, you can kind of differentiate the Baltics a bit based on their signs. They have different road markers even. So yeah, like these are things different signage there's there's so many different signs that each country uses and uh just learning uh like the differences between those signs really really like goes a long way um so those can be kilometer markers those can be road number signs or like uh you know like telling you oh you're like 70 kilometers from madrid or something like that so those kind of like road signs um, kilometer markers, stop signs. Stop signs are also really huge because, uh, for example, in Spain they have a different font. In Greece they have a different font compared to usual. So the font on the stop signs. In South America you get stop signs saying pare. 
in Latin, like in Central America, you get the stop signs saying Alto. And uh, yeah, different stop signs around the world help, help quite a bit. In Malaysia, it says Beherenti and uh, all that stuff. So there's different, like tons of different signs that you can look at. And uh, uh, yeah, they, they often tell you what country you're in. So there's a lot to learn in that uh, in that section, but I'm not going to go into that in, too in depth because that would be a whole video in itself. So that is another very, very useful way to know the country. And then you also have landscape and vegetation, architecture and water tanks. So for example, often I see people who have learned pollards say, like ask, what is the difference between the Turkish pollard and the Australian pollard? Realistically, it doesn't matter because even though they look the same, the landscape is so different between Turkey and Australia that you don't know, need to know the difference between the pollards, you know? So learning all these like bollards and poles and stuff it's good but uh, like it, it won't be useful if you don't combine it with landscape and vegetation so knowing how it like for example knowing the general sort of landscape you, you get in ireland uk and france uh knowing how generally like kyrgyzstan or mongolia look how the nordics look how southern chile argentina look uh <laughs> Yeah, like just just the general landscape and vegetation is like a thing that goes without saying that you you need to know that to like make a region guess and uh, so so yeah for example you could make just a ba guess based on the landscape and vegetation that you're in the Baltics and then you use the what do you call it like the pollards or the signs or the poles to differentiate like which of the three Baltics you're in you know so. Uh, it's it, it it all goes together. It's all in like conjunction, and uh, learning like the different landscapes and vegetation is pretty important. I'd say uh, probably the most important thing even. And uh, yeah, you know, like uh, in South South Af South Africa, you have some really unique uh, table-like mountains. Ah, it's not here, but uh, in uh, near near Cape Town at least, you you can see that. So yeah. Anyway, my point being learning different landscapes, vegetation, and soil even. So like very red soil is, uh, you see that in like Australia, Brazil, Cambodia, some parts of Africa, like Uganda, Kenya. So learning the different soil, landscape and vegetation also helps uh, quite a bit to recognize the country you're in. Um, and you also have architecture and water tanks. I'm not gonna go into that too much because uh, I'd say they are like uh, lesser important uh, tips to learn countries because architecture can quite often be deceiving. Uh, it, it helps quite a bit. So uh, Austria, Slovenia has its own kind of architecture. Hungary has a very unique architecture, which you can also find in like Northern Serbia, some parts of Slovakia and some parts of Romania. Uh, and yeah, Czechia, Slovakia, Poland, they have their own kind of houses. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania have their own kind of houses. Netherlands, Belgium have their own thing. UK, Ireland, France, and yeah, like architecture does help quite a bit to differentiate the general regions. Uh, but yeah, it can sometimes be deceiving, and it's uh, it's not always 100% accurate. But it it, it often uh, if it, it's a useful thing to learn for sure. So um, that's another thing. And then water tanks are not always useful, but they're useful in some places, like South America especially. Um, so yeah, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, um, all of that. Like uh, yeah, there's a there's a whole document on uh, water tanks which I can maybe find right now, right here. So yeah, yeah, you can see Mexico, Brazil, Bolivia, Dominican Republic, all of these have a uh, very unique looking water tanks, which you can learn and uh, get good at. So there, there are a bunch of different documents and resources that you can use to get good. And uh, for example, for camera gens, you have a document, for car meta, you have a document, for landscape and vegetation, you have an interactive map, uh, which you can use. Um, for bollards also, you have a document. And uh, yeah, there are a bunch of resources that are available, which you can use to, you know, sort of uh, 
get good at recognizing countries. So that's uh, that's that. Now I'm 40 minutes into the video, so I should move on to the actual parts <laughs> that I wanted to talk about. But uh, yeah, if you if you finish step one and step two, you're already pretty good at the game, and you can usually recognize countries. So a lot of people sort of get to this level and then stop because uh, you already have learned so much and you you know so much already. So uh, it's, it's good enough uh, for a lot of people and they stop there but uh, the best of the best players don't stop there at all they still have learned way more than that so next thing is region specific clues within countries so this is where landscape and vegetation come in really really handy and uh, a lot of people spend time and this is where sort of people turn into like country specialists because uh, if you've seen like the rainbow tournaments you'll often hear the commentators say that oh this person's really good at uh, russia this person's really good at turkey this person's really good at brazil or whatnot so people spend a lot of time studying specific countries and uh, getting better at region specific clues uh, and uh, yeah so for example landscape and vegetation if you are in Russia, the south here looks very unique. It's pretty like dry and uh, flat, and uh, yeah, you also get like a uh, just like loads of like fields with uh, with nothing else inside, and uh, that's uh, that's very very common to see here. Then you have a uh, Kamchatka all the way in the east, which looks very unique as well. It's got uh, it's got some. Uh, very big mountains and volcanoes let's see if i can find a location that can show you the volcano uh it? Well, yeah anyway you you get like very big mountains and uh, volcanoes uh, out here in kamchatka so kamchatka is very unique in russia uh Sakhalin is very unique uh, this this little thing here it's got uh, it's often got like cabbages along the road as well so you also get those in Hokkaido here uh, but you also get them in Sakhalin and uh, yeah Sakhalin has a unique vibe to it the mountains here near Ulanud have a very unique uh, feel to them as well okay this uh, of course I clicked the one location where it's uh, there's no mountain but uh, uh, let's see can I find a nice location here so yeah, you see these kind of mountains. So the thing with Russia is a lot of Russia is flat. So you can kind of learn how different mountains look uh, because there aren't too many mountains in Russia. So this is also a very beautiful region in Russia, the Altai region. So these kind of mountains are very easy to remember. Uh, up here in Murmansk, you get like very short trees and you also get some mountains and stuff. So that's also very, uh, very nice. And uh, yeah, so that's how you can sort of like get good at region guessing you start learning uh, a different sort of clues that exist uh, in different areas in Brazil for example uh, out here in Rio de Janeiro you get uh, very unique kind of hills also in Espirito Santo I didn't really find hills in that location but <laughs> uh, you can trust me that there are actually good hills okay this is literally in the hills can I just get a nice view of them no but it is what it is uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah these kind of uh, this kind of area has some unique hills uh, up there in, so like this is pretty much the Amazon rainforest so Acre, Roraima, Amapa, Amazonas, Para, Rondonia these have like a very unique vibe to it because it's pretty much the Amazon rainforest and, uh, and yeah like uh, if you spend some time on it you can get good differentiating Akre, Ruraima, Amapa, all of that and uh, yeah that it helps you region guess in Brazil Brazil is huge so that helps in Australia as well it uh, helps a lot to region guess so Northern Territory has a very unique looking like soil uh, Western Australia has it as well and Queensland uh, so yeah that's a there's a bit of landscape and vegetation to learn but there's also sp state and province specific signs and poles so for example uh, South Australia has its unique electric pole. Let's see if I can find it. Um, also, this uh, this video is going to be like an hour long, I guess, or something like that. So, well, I guess it's fine, right? There's so many things to learn in the, in the game that I just can't explain it in 20 minutes. 
if you want to truly understand what is possible. So this uh, this pole here is uh, very unique in uh, South Australia. Sometimes you get it outside it, but 90% of the time it's going to be South Australia. Same with Northern Territory, it has its own pole. I'm not going to show it all, I think it's going to take me a while to find things, but uh, yeah, those kind of like state-specific clues or province-specific clues really help. Uh, so yeah, you can do that in Australia, US for example, and Canada has a lot of state and province-specific clues. So really helps knowing which states and provinces have front plates and which don't. Uh, also helps knowing what the front, like what the number plates actually look like. Um, uh, and yeah, like uh, they have like different signposts, like Manitoba has a unique signpost. Alberta has its own unique looking bollards and uh, yeah, like there's, there's a bunch of things you can learn to get good at uh, just uh, <laughs> region guessing the US and Canada and uh, yeah, all of that, Brazil, Argentina, a lot of, uh, lot of things to learn, landscape, vegetation, region specific clues and this is sort of where you start detaching yourself from the con well not really detaching but like you start moving away from the country clues it's because uh for example if you know that you're looking at the hills that you find in rio de janeiro which i still can't seem to find a location for uh <laughs> so these kind of hills sort of it's uh it's like these i don't know like there aren't really trees on them they're like nice rolling hills roundish hills and uh, when you see these kind of hills, you really don't need like country specific clues because you just know that this landscape is found in this part of Brazil. And then knowing that there's black back of science or I don't know, like a Brazilian pole or like this chevron. Well, yeah, chevrons also are a good way to learn like country specific clues, but uh, also guardrails, I forgot about them. If you know that this just looks like this area, then you kind of don't need to know the space, like country specific clues, you know. And uh, that's that's kind of what happens for players who have gone beyond step two of just learning like country specific clues. So there are a lot of people who go to that point, but uh, the real like best of the best players go beyond that and go and learn these kind of things. And uh, when you start learning these things, the country specific clues start becoming less and less important. So like all the pro players will know these country specific clues, but uh, the need or the urgency to use them reduces quite a bit the deeper you go into the game. And this is uh, what I'm trying to sort of demonstrate. So that's uh, these are a couple of ways to get region specific clues. Uh, a very useful way is also area codes. Uh, area codes help a lot in so many countries. Brazil is one example. Russia is another example. Uh, Japan is an example. Taiwan, I guess, also. Uh, France, area codes help a lot. Um, US, I wouldn't really say so. There's just too many area codes there. Uh, but yeah, just learning the general area codes helps so much in so many countries because uh, often you have like little to no information but you'd have like one area code and uh, that can help you region guess so uh, yeah a lot of people spend a lot of a lot of time learning area codes for different countries and uh, it definitely comes in really handy here I have a paste bin of uh, like different area codes that people use so for example if I go to Brazil you can see <sighs> this image so a lot of a uh, lot of good players already know like all these area codes so if you see an area code 49 then you already know you're here if you see an area code 95 then you know you're in Roraima so <clears throat> those kind of things you know so that is a uh, that is also a very useful tip that people learn to get better at region guessing um, and then there's also other things province names come in handy in some countries so like Philippines, for example, has provinces written all over the place, but uh, like like everywhere within the country is what I mean. But they don't really show up on uh, on the map, on Google Maps. So if you know where a certain province is, then uh, you already know what region to make a guess in. And uh, 
because the province name is written in so many places, it's uh, it's quite easy to come across it. So learning province names in places like Philippines or Indonesia. Indonesia has a lot of Kabupaten or regencies, which are like uh, different, uh, they aren't really provinces, but they're like, I don't know, like, do you call them districts? I don't know. But uh, yeah, they have a lot of uh, regencies, uh, which, uh, which people learn. And uh, that that really helps a lot with uh, making a guess. So, if you see like a prob like a couple pattern that you recognize, you you can already know like you're in northern Sulawesi or something. So that is uh, those things come in handy in some countries. So Philippines, Indonesia being uh, good examples. Um, and then there is also coverage season. So this is a this is kind of like a gray area. It's not always useful, but sometimes it can be useful. So, for example, in Russia, if you get a Gen 4 coverage and you get like a winter coverage, so maybe I can find the location or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, here should be coverage. Yeah. So winter coverage, Gen 4, is usually found in southern Russia. But uh, you have to be careful that it's Gen 4. Gen 3 winter coverage can be in other places. Um, so the coverage season can sometimes help. It's not always that helpful, but uh, you know, it, it can also help with recognizing countries. Like most of uh, Bulgaria, I mean, not really, but like quite a bit of coverage in Bulgaria is like winter coverage. Same with Hungary. Uh, so you can kind of learn that. You can also learn like some countries have snow coverage so yeah like you can learn which which different places you can find snow coverage in so new zealand bulgaria czechia hungary norway sweden and uh yeah if you see snow you pretty much know like certain areas that you could be in uh or even like within canada like uh there are certain certain areas that have snow coverage and certain areas that don't so yeah if you see snow you can kind of like region guess based on that <clears throat> So um, coverage and season helps to helps quite a bit as well, but uh, I think that's something that you pick up the more you play. There's not like an easy way to learn it. It's just uh, playing more and more and uh, seeing what areas you find different kind of coverage in. So all of this helps you a lot with region guessing and. Uh, that already makes you a much better player than you were with uh, just step two. So now you don't just recognize it's Brazil because you see the back of the sign, but you also recognize that it's the state of Parana. And then you make a guess here instead of all of Brazil. And that's already a really good guess. And in comparative environments and world records and speed runs or all of that, you need this, uh, this kind of expertise to, to be able to make these kind of guesses, you know? So, a lot of things to learn, a lot of things uh, that you can pick up. I've listed a few here and there's probably some that I'm missing. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely things that you can learn to pick up region specific clues. And uh, I'd say this is this is not even it because uh, a lot of like the best of the best players know these region specific clues for most countries. Um, so okay maybe people don't always know like i don't know all the indonesian kabu pattern so like some things maybe you like people won't but uh, a lot of region specific clues usually the good players are familiar with so that's uh, that's one thing to keep in mind and then also uh we can move to step four and i think this is the stage where you actually turn into into like the best of the best into the pro because uh you've learned so much about the world you've learned the different continents you've learned the different countries you've learned uh, different regions within the countries now how further can you go because you want to make the best guess possible right that's that's the goal of the game and uh <laughs> now that uh, so so the thing is like if two good players are playing against each other they're both gonna know what raima looks like so if they're playing like against each other and they want to be closer than the other person, they both know that they're in Roraima. How do you get closer? How do you make a better guess than the other person when you are in a specific region that you that you both know? 
And that's where it kind of turns into becoming, uh, yeah, I, this is this is like this is the stage that separates literally the best of the best players from the very good players, if uh, if that makes sense. Because uh, people spend a lot of time learning what different roads look like. So <clears throat> it's not just about learning regions now. It's about learning roads. And at the highest level of gameplay, that is what people are doing. Because they already know all the previous steps that I've talked to you about. They know how to guess different continents. They know how to guess different countries. So everything I showed you in step two right here. Like, pretty much every good player already knows all of that. So, the instant you are dropped into a location, most good players instantly know the country, just uh, just based on uh, where they are dropped, uh, because they know all of these hints, all of these country-specific clues, region-specific clues, all of that. So, uh, yeah, you've seen a lot of people doing, like, blink videos, 0.1 seconds to make a guess, and... Uh, all of, uh, all of that 10 second NMPZ games and uh, really all it comes down to is just how much people have played. They've played this game so much that they not only know the country but also know the region within it just just uh, instantly when they spawn because they've just seen those areas so many times that they know how they look and uh, they know all these country specific, region specific hints that, uh, that come in handy. So uh, so yeah, people at that level are extremely good at the game, but uh, what what separates literally the best people from those people is learning different roles. And the more you want to get into pro gameplay, the less it the less the game turns like yeah, the game is lesser about guessing the countries and the regions and more about guessing the roads. And uh, that's that's why you see people doing all these like insane insane five Ks and whatnot. So uh, to give you some examples, I'm gonna go sh tell you some roads that are like a uh, pretty unique, and uh, a lot of good players already know them. So for example, Road 30C in Peru here is quite unique because uh, well, as soon as you spawn, if you're a good player, you know that you're in Peru. And uh, if you see, most of the coverage in Peru is like along the coast. And the reason for that is well, most of the cities in Peru are along this area as well. Because this is pretty much, again, the Amazon rainforest. And uh, that's why not uh, not many inhabited places here. Uh, Iquitos, Pucalpa, and uh, this road 30C are pretty much the main areas that have coverage in Peru. In this uh, Amazonian part of Peru, so to say. So, when you're in Amazonian Peru, then, uh, like here you can see, this is a Peruvian signpost, so you know you're in Peru. Um, and then you, you can clearly tell that you're in Amazonian Peru, you don't see any hills, it's super flat. And then, and then yeah, it, it basically just narrows it down to like two or three roads. So, Tarapoto, Iquitos, Pucalpa, and uh, 30C. So... Uh, you can invest some time, you can spend some uh, time to look at the differences between, let's say, the road to Iquitos and the road 30C. And then, yeah, you can already pick up some, some hints. You can see, like here, for example, there are white, uh, like yellow dash lines in the middle. Whereas here on the road to Iquitos, it's, uh, I, I don't know, like the lines are kind of faded out, I guess, or some parts it doesn't even have the lines has white lines and uh, yeah, it's, it's not just the road lines, it's just the general vibe, the angle as well. So if you missed my compass video, I talked about this, but the road angle helps you a lot because your Iquitos road will al almost always have this road angle. You can see it's pretty much straight. But if you see a horizontal road angle like this, then you know that you're on 30C because the road to Iquitos is not horizontal at any point. So if you're confused if it's this road or this road, then you can use the compass to your benefit. So, so that's uh, that's how you can learn certain roads. Um, uh, yeah, there's this bunch of roads actually to go through. This road from Yakuts to Magadan, it got coverage very recently. And it's a very, very amazing road to look at. Uh, just in the middle of Siberia, it's uh, it's really awesome, and uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. So 
If you've seen this road, you'll always remember it because of how amazing it looks. This road down here near Punta Arenas is very unique as well. It's got uh, yellow outside lines and yellow middle lines and uh, you have water to the side as well. But uh, yeah, usually in Chile you have white middle and outside lines and you see yellow lines there. So that becomes very unique. And uh, yeah, just like that, there's so many different roads you can learn. And the more time you invest in learning roads, the better you get at, uh, at, uh, at the game. Because, uh, you know, if you just know what road it is, then you don't have to worry about the country specific clue or the like region specific clue. You just straight away know what road it is. So, uh, yeah, pretty much all of that previous information starts becoming less and less important. That's what I was saying at the beginning is uh, a lot of people think it's like a magic box that you learn all the pollards and all the meta and uh, you just go to the game. But that's absolutely not true. And uh, those are just like the beginning steps to get you, you know, get you floating. And then, uh, then you actually start swimming when... Uh, when you like learn these things, the region specific clues and just roads basically. So you might have heard me talk about Mongolia quite a bit. I've done some videos on Mongolia. I've spent a lot of time on Mongolia and uh, basically getting good at Mongolia was pretty much the same thing. You learn the different roads and the different cities and how they look. So uh, that's, that's really it, you know, if I see this kind of a road, I can always recognize it because uh, of how unique it is. It's got like some dirt to its side and it's got this like fresh pavement or uh, I don't know what how to say it, but uh, it's, a, it's a very unique looking road and uh, I can recognize it. Also the road angle helps there. Um, so yeah, you can start learning like the different coverage and uh, ultimately the more you remember how different coverage looks in different parts of the world and how different roads and cities look, uh, that's that's all there is to it, you know. Uh, so, for example, here in Baru North, if I... Oh, this is not a good spot. Let's go outside a bit. So, in Baru North, you will see this big building under construction. So, <laughs> this is old coverage, but uh, right now it's already been constructed, but... Uh, since Mongolia doesn't have updated coverage, uh, when you see this big building in construction, you know it's Baru North because uh, you know that's one way to recognize a city. Kharkorin has a very unique uh, monastery right here, so uh, let's, uh, let's get this. So yeah, if you see this monastery, you know you're in Kharkorin. Uh, and yeah, there's multiple ways you can remember different cities. So for example, in Samin Ud. Yeah, let's see if I can find a nice example. So, uh, this is not one. Yeah, so here in Zaminud, you get lampposts with this thing on it. And that's a, that's a thing unique to Zaminud in Mongolia. So, if I see a, a lamppost with uh, this on it, then I know I'm in Zamino. So there are different, like, very interesting clues that you can pick up to recognize certain cities or recognize certain roads. Um, and you just pretty much use them to guess. So this this is a very unique road as well. It's the only road in Mongolia that has this road angle and the lake south, to, south of it and mountains north of it. So... It's pretty much just a purely landscape and uh, you can, uh, yeah, the road angle, water to the south and mountains on this side, that's enough to know that it is this road in Mongolia. So that's uh, that's what I did. I spent a lot of time learning the coverage in Mongolia and uh, that's pretty much what, what a lot of good players do. So yeah, if you've seen people uh, being called like specialists at Turkey or Australia or Russia or Brazil, They've spent a lot of time learning different roads and different uh, cities in these areas and what they look like and uh, picking up clues to recognize th these specific specific cities or stuff. So that's uh, that's how you get good at uh, at that level, you know, because uh, as I said, if uh, if both players are really good, then they both know that they're going to be in, for example, Western Australia because uh, they, they can region guess that or let's say they, they know that they are both in Palawan in Philippines which is this island <clears throat> and uh, yeah like at this point 
it's just a, it's just a matter of learning the roads um, to try and get, gain an advantage. Sometimes it's very easy to do because some roads are very unique and stand out. Like I said, uh, for 30C right here, it's uh, it's very unique to the country and uh, that's why it's easy to remember. So a lot of players remember it, but uh, yeah, uh, it really comes down to that. Different highways in Russia can be differentiated based on uh, certain things as well. So. People who memorize the different roads in Russia are the best players at Russia. That's just how it works. So for example, this road right here in Russia is all like snow coverage. So that's uh, that's how you know that uh, if you see this Gen 3 snow coverage, by the way. So if you see Gen 3 snow coverage, you, you're, you're on this road usually. Uh, and Gen 4 snow coverage would be all the way down here in Russia. So, ah, so I, I can't be bothered finding it. It's here actually. It's also a very beautiful location. Wait, is this not it? Or is it here? Ah, here. Look at this uh, super beautiful Gen 4 Russia coverage. Oh my god, look at this. This is, this is gorgeous. So yeah, anyway, um, that's, uh, that's, that's how it goes pretty much. Is at the highest level of gameplay, people are learning how different roads and different cities look like. And uh, that's how you can see people making like insane 5k guesses because they just know what road it is. And uh, there's a lot of studying that goes into it, a lot of time practicing, preparing, uh, a lot of different ways to get uh, good at this and learn all of this. Speed runs, country streaks, um, map making. All of these really help out to remember to like the different different parts of different countries, what they look like, what different road looks like, roads look like, and uh, specific clues for them. And uh, yeah, just uh, the deeper you go into it, there's so much to learn. As I said, the world is a massive place. There is so much coverage. It is impossible to learn every single bit of coverage. So <laughs> there's just there's just infinite learning really you, you, there's there's no stopping point there's so much to learn and then you can also play some like do some additional tips to uh which also help out so a lot of good players for example know how to read cyrillic so if you're in russia and ukraine pretty much reading cyrillic is like the only option uh you don't usually get too much english or latin script so most good players already know how to read cyrillic and then some people also know how to read thai or uh, Japanese kanji, so often you find like a prefecture kanji in Japan, which comes in very handy. So some, quite a few people know that. So yeah, learning different scripts helps a lot. Thai script helps a lot as well to, especially in speed runs, it helps so much. So uh, yeah, additional stuff that people do to get good, getting good at pinpointing. There's so many place names and uh, often you just see the place. So often you spawn in front of a sign which says like a massive city, let, let's say Temuco, and a lot of people won't know it. But uh, if you've played enough, then you know that Temuco is a big place in Chile. So learning different place names uh, also comes along by just playing, uh, playing like explorer mode or moving games and all of that. Um, so yeah, getting good at pinpointing, you learn a lot of place names, which comes in handy. So you don't, you don't, uh, like, there are a lot of people who, like, uh, are just new at the game and they just Google and that's really cringe. But, uh, uh, yeah, like a lot of go good speedrunners and stuff, they just, like, have memorized pretty much every place name in the world. They just know so much. Um, and then the compass. I made a whole video on the compass. So compass is an extremely, extremely useful tool. Talked about it a bit in this video as well. So you can go watch my video on the compass. It'll help you train and get better at uh, learning, uh, uh, like making the best use of it. And then lastly, also learning road numbering system. So that can also help region guests. So for example, in the compass video, I said uh, in Iceland, the roads are ordered in a certain way. So Road number one goes all around the country, then road two is here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all ordered like sequentially. So if you see a road starting with eight, you know you're in this part of Iceland. Uh, same with uh, Chile. Chile also has a very like nice uh, vertically organized sort of a road number system. So if you see a road number in Chile, it can help you get uh, 
good uh, latitude. Also with Spain, road numbers are often uh, yeah, just named based on the closest city to it. So if you see a road number in Spain, it's, uh, it's quite, quite nice. Um, yeah, road numbering systems, even in the US, the, uh, the roads are ordered like sequentially. I, th and I think uh, Chicago Geographer has a whole video talking about this as well. So you should uh, go check that out. Uh, and yeah, if you just find a road number, it can also often help you region guess and uh, even pinpoint if you are quick enough. So all of that comes in really handy. Pinpointing, compass, road names, and uh, road numbers and the place names and all of that. So yeah, those and learning learning different scripts, of course. So learning learning all of these are additional tools to help you get even better. And uh, a lot of good players already know these things. So most people know how to read Cyrillic. And uh, yeah, most people are familiar with a lot of place names as well as road numbers. So man, I've been I've been talking for a while. <laughs> my mouth kind of hurts, but it's uh, it's over an hour. Oh my god, this is gonna be a, such a long video. Well, you know what? The good thing is, if you watch all the way up to here, you probably got something out of it, and uh, that's uh, that's that's what I hope for. Basically, what I wanted to do was talk you through the process of being someone who's starting out in the game and going from there all the way up to being the best of the best. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm the best of the best. I'd say I'm uh, pretty good, pretty up there, but uh, there are definitely players who are better than me. And uh, I'd say the major advantage that those players have over me is that they just remember way more roads than I do and way more cities than I do. Uh, well, I, I don't mean like road names and city names. I mean like how the roads and cities actually look. So that's uh, that's uh, if I want to improve right now, that's that's one thing I can do. <clears throat> There's also some other things that I could do, like uh, learning uh, Indonesian Kabupaten, for example. <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's infinite uh, things to learn pretty much. Uh, the world is a vast place. Uh, but I think I think I've managed to convey my point that uh, to reach this level in the game, you go past the general world clues, you go past the country specific clues, uh, then you get into region specific stuff, and then the further you go into it, you get into identifying different roads and. Uh, that's why my previous compass video was also so important because uh, the road angle often helps with identifying the correct road. So, yeah, um, <laughs> it's pretty much road guesser at this stage, really, or city guesser. I don't know, and uh, less about being a country guesser, which a lot of people who are starting out uh, struggle with, which which is fair enough because there's so many things to learn even about the countries themselves. I've been playing for over a year, like a year and six months pretty much. And uh, even after playing for so long, there's still so many things that I don't know. Well, granted, like I didn't play each game with the intention of being the best and uh, learning everything I could. But uh, even still, having played for so long, there's still so many things I haven't picked up and uh, I have scope to improve on. And uh, that's that's the beauty of the game, I think. There's just just no limit. There's so much to learn, and uh, yeah. So ultimately, GeoGuessr is a game about exploration. You learn different world, different parts of the world, what languages they use, uh, their landscapes, their vegetation, their architecture, and. Uh, when I say different parts of the world, I don't just mean countries, but I also mean specific regions. Uh, so you learn all of that. You learn even different roads, the infrastructure in these countries, and uh, there's so so many things you pick up on. And uh, yeah, I mean, recognizing roads is pretty much the peak of it, right? <laughs> Can you go further than that? I don't really think so because. Uh, if you can, I mean, it's like, it's like, imagine like you just go outside your house, you're going to work, you drive on a certain road to reach your office. 
and you see that road in Geogus, and you're pretty much going to recognize it instantly because you see it every day. Uh, and then you pretty much do, <laughs> just do that for like most highways in the world, and uh, and then you then you just know what they look like. You know, you don't have to worry about bollards, you don't have to worry about poles, any of that, because you just know what the road looks like. It's like you've traveled there every day, pretty much. So. But yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of practice goes into this. Like, uh, to remember the roads in a certain country. Like, I've just gotten good at Mongolia, right? Uh, well, I mean, I have also studied other countries, but like, specifically for Mongolia, when I was getting good at it, I have learned pretty much most of its coverage now. But to get to that, I have, I've definitely played like over a thousand games on Mongolia. So. It's not that easy to remember roads. Like I'm just saying it so casually, but it's actually insane how much time and practice goes into remembering roads. But the payoff is huge as well, right? Because then you can just get like an instant 5K because, oh, you just know what road this is and then you just find the exact spot on it. And uh, that's a, uh, it's very rewarding when you can do that. And it's uh, and like whenever you're playing a game and you load into a certain road that you recognize, you're like, oh my god, no way, I know this road, let me go and 5k this. And uh, that feeling is uh, is really, really good. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it goes pretty much. So thing is, the best of the players that you see playing, doing all these crazy challenges, 0.1 second blink mode, soil guessing, speed runs, world record country streaks, like... All, all of these sort of insane things, 24.9k NMPZ, um, like <laughs> instant 5Ks and all of this crazy stuff. It's all a result of hours, days, months, years of practice that uh, people have put into this game. This is just really infinite to learn and uh, all of that shows in those videos and uh, of course people will only clip like the best part and put that into a video so it looks even more insane so you won't see like the 25 failed attempts and you'll only see the 26th attempt in which they got like a 24.9k NMPC and uh, then then it's then you're really impressed you know you're like how do you how do you do that he's cheating or he's there's something wrong there there's no way anyone can do that but the, the reality is but there are some cheaters that uh, <laughs> But uh, the most, but uh, when I'm like what I'm talking about are the actual legitimate players who you see playing in, uh, making videos and playing like I don't know in Rainbow's tournament, in World Records, in Speedrun.com, all of that. Um, that that's just the reality of it. They have spent like an unbelievable amount of time of preparation in order to get that 24.9k NMPZ in like 50 seconds or whatever. So <laughs> to get those really insane results within that one minute video, you need like months and months of practice and crazy amounts of learning, retention uh, and all of that to get there. Uh, but the thing is, if you look at it as like a challenge and as a chore to do it, you're never really going to get there. Like if you think, oh, I have this mountain of things to remember, you're, you're really never going to get there. But if you just enjoy the game, and if you just like enjoy guessing and trying to figure out where you are in the world, um, and you play alongside good people, which who which are like you can find plenty of them if you just go on Twitch and find uh, some some uh, good streamers. They'll often have a lot of these good players playing along, and you can ask in chat uh, how did you get this or was there any clue that I missed I'm sure a lot of people will point out to you how like what was recognizable so maybe there was an electric pole maybe there was a state specific clue or maybe they just knew the road you know <laughs> so um, yeah there's, I think if you want to get better at the game playing alongside good players is definitely the best way to do it and fortunately there are plenty of people like this who have spent so much time i'd say maybe like uh, 200 people or maybe even 300 approx who are at this level of gameplay 
or maybe even more. I don't, I don't know. It's just a rough estimate. But like around 500 people at most have uh, have this sort of expertise on the game, and uh, or maybe not even that. Actually, I don't know. But uh, yeah, a couple of hundreds, and uh, there's so much to learn, and you'll find these people all around the place. Um, and that's it. That's just the best way to get good at the game. It's just to play along with people. Uh, again, as I mentioned, I have my play along series on YouTube, but I also stream on Twitch, where I can also talk about this if you if you join my stream and uh, I can give you hints while playing along. So that's how you can get good. And uh, I'm at an hour and twenty minutes. <laughs> I'm still rambling. Might as well make it an hour and 30 minutes at this point. I don't even know if anyone's watching now. But uh, if you are, then uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And congrats for making it this far into the video. Uh, but yeah. If you want me to do like a series of videos where I go through like all these steps, I could do something like that. It would take me a bit of preparation. So I could make a video on like the general clues about the world. Although I did talk about them a bit today, um, I don't know. The thing is, I'm kind of lazy, you know. <laughs> so making like these kind of videos would take so much preparation. Step two, especially. There's there's no way I'm doing this. There's just too many things to learn here that uh, I don't think I can cover in uh, in one video. It would take multiple videos, and uh, there are definitely videos out there by a lot of creators that go over all these hints, all these clues. I know Geopeter has some, Zigzag has some, Chicago Geographer has some, <clears throat> and a lot of uh, a lot of my friends on Twitch are also starting uh, making YouTube videos, and uh, you can find uh, find them also. Uh, yeah, basically, if you just search uh, search up like I don't know, like Eastern Europe tips geoguess, so you'll probably find a bunch of videos that uh, help out, or South America. I know Zigzag has a lot of a uh, lot of videos on Australia. Chicago Geographer has a lot of videos on the uh, US, so you can also get good at region guessing in certain countries, basically like that, just like that. Um, and that there's also like a lot of, lot of documents that you can use to to get good at uh, not just like country guessing, but also region guessing. So for Mongolia, especially, you have a <laughs> huge 180-page guide or something. Uh, I don't even remember how many pages it was at this point. Oh, someone's actually watching it right now. So, yeah, you see, someone's uh, learning the Mongolian meta. 173-page document. And, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of things. Japan has a bunch of uh, prefecture tips. There's a diamond road sign meta in Japan that you can learn. Uh, yeah, this is, that's just so much, really, to be honest. Uh, U.S. state highway shields, U.S. number plates, U.S. state flags, um, and yeah, there's, there's so much to learn, bro. <laughs> it's it's pretty much infinite. And uh, yeah, so you can you can find videos, you can find play along, if you can find these documents to help you improve. But I'd say if you if you're in it to actually learn and get good at the game, just just take the natural route. Learn these things as you as you keep playing. Just keep playing uh, on a regular basis uh, with with people. It's it's a lot of fun. I'd say I'd say I have, have a lot of fun playing on Twitch, not just on my stream, but also on other people's streams. We have we have a we have a good time, and uh, that's what matters, right? You, you also learn and you also have a great time with uh, with other people. So it's a it's a win win in my eyes. And yeah, it's it's uh, there's so many things to to learn. So. All that being said, I hope you have a general idea now of uh, how much the best of the best players actually know and how much there is to learn to reach that sort of level. And uh, yeah, honestly, it's, uh, it's just a matter of playing and practicing and uh, you'll get there. You'll get there for sure. If, you, if you're trying to get better at the game, don't be intimidated by how much there is to learn. Just, uh, just keep playing. Just keep enjoying your journey, and uh, you'll be extremely good at the game before you know it. It, it uh, takes a few months, but uh, yeah, it's 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 good enough. Uh, if you if you keep playing regularly, in a few months you can get to a very high level. So, I am out of breath. 
and the video has been going for extremely long so hopefully you enjoyed it um, ideally as I said it would have been nice if I did like a cut down edited version which is like to the point but you know me I'm just uh, I'm just kind of not that kind of person I'm also kind of lazy to edit videos but uh, <laughs> yeah I don't know I just prefer just turning on the recording just rambling for like ages and uh, making the video so yeah hopefully you got something out of it hopefully it showed you general overview of uh, how you can go from being a beginner to being an expert and yeah that's, uh, that's about it I'm not gonna prolong the video any longer or <laughs> yeah I don't know uh, but uh, thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it if there are any specific videos that you would like me to make let me know but please also keep in mind that I'm extremely lazy. So uh, the chances of me putting like hours of preparation into one video are is, is not really that high. So, uh, but you never know. If 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 a lot of people want to, want me to do a certain specific video, I, I'm down to do it. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you what you would like to see, and uh, yeah, maybe I could do some like tips kind of videos but uh, yeah as I said I think the best way to improve is to play along with good players and uh, my play along series on the channel will still keep going so you can look forward to another play along and uh, hopefully pick up some tips during that and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in the next video then so thank you for watching and I will see you next time bye bye